the 18th century development of natural taxonomy by Carl Linnaeus stands as a significant milestone in the history of biology. Linnaeus's work, particularly his The System of Nature, sought to impose order on the natural world by categorizing plants, animals, and eventually humans. While this system revolutionized scientific thinking and laid the groundwork for modern biological classification, its extension into human taxonomy introduced deeply problematic assumptions about race that have had lasting philosophical and social implications. Linnaeus's primary aim was to develop a comprehensive system for organizing the diversity of life. His work provided a structured method for naming and categorizing species based on observable characteristics. However, when it came to humans, Linnaeus ventured beyond biology into the realm of socio-cultural judgment. Linnaeus placed humans within the order primates, alongside apes and monkeys, recognizing the close biological relationship between species. However, he further divided Homo sapiens into distinct varieties based on geography, temperament, and physical characteristics. 1. Americanus, red-skinned, choleric, free, ruled by customs. 2. Europaeus, white-skinned, sanguine, muscular, ruled by laws. 3. Asiaticus, yellow-skinned, melancholic, stiff, ruled by opinions. 4. Afer, Africanus, black-skinned, phlegmatic, lazy, ruled by caprice. Linnaeus also introduced a fifth category, Homo monstrosus, which included so-called deformed humans, mythical beings, and people from extreme environments, such as Patagonians and Hottentots. Linnaeus's classification was influenced by the ancient theory of the four humors, blood, phlegm, black bile, yellow bile, which he correlated with different human groups. His assignment of temperament to skin color was based on traditional medical beliefs rather than empirical evidence. Despite these classifications, Linnaeus did not claim that different human groups were separate species. He maintained that all humans belonged to a single species, Homo sapiens, distinguishing him from later racial theorists. However, his system laid the groundwork for racial classification, which later thinkers used to justify racial hierarchies. Modern genetics has thoroughly debunked Linnaeus's racial categories. Race, as used in Linnaeus's classification, is now understood to be a social construct rather than a biologically meaningful division. His work contributed to the flawed concept of racial essentialism, which influenced scientific racism in the 19th and 20th centuries. Linnaeus's classification of humans was a product of his time, blending empirical observations with outdated medical and social theories. While his contributions to taxonomy remain intact, his human classification system serves as an example of how scientific ideas can be shaped by cultural biases. Linnaeus's classification of humans and the broader concept of race and taxonomy reveal several philosophical and biological flaws. These flaws, rooted in both scientific misunderstandings and sociopolitical influences, have had lasting consequences in medicine, anthropology, and social sciences. One major flaw in Linnaeus's classification was its reliance on essentialism, the belief that each group had an unchanging essence. Linnaeus categorized humans into distinct varieties based on external traits and temperament, a method that lacked empirical genetic evidence. This was part of a broader Aristotelian tradition that viewed species as fixed, which later clashed with evolutionary biology. Essentialism falsely assumed that human groups are biologically discrete rather than recognizing continuous variation across populations. Linnaeus's human taxonomy was also built upon contradictory and arbitrary criteria. He classified humans based on geographical regions but linked them to behavioral or moral attributes which are non-biological traits. The classification relied on subjective descriptions such as calling Europeans inventive and Africans negligent reflecting ethnocentric biases rather than scientific observations. 
Linnaeus included homo monstrosus, mythical or deformed humans, which lacked any rational basis and contradicted his scientific method. Yet Linnaeus's classification laid the foundation for racial categories still used in medicine and society, despite race having no genetic or biological validity. The flawed assumptions include the idea that skin color or skull shape correlates with intelligence or temperament. Modern genetics has shown that human variation is greater within so-called races than between them. Race continues to be used in medical research despite its unscientific basis, leading to misdiagnosis and disparities in healthcare. Linnaeus and later scientists were influenced by social and political pressures rather than pure scientific inquiry. His work was shaped by colonialism and European superiority myths in that his taxonomy justified European dominance by assigning favorable traits to Europeans and negative traits to others, and legacy in eugenics and scientific racism in that later scientists misused Linnaean categories to promote racial hierarchies and policies such as eugenics, segregation, and apartheid. Linnaeus' classification of humans into racial categories based on physical appearance and temperament contributed to the foundation of race-based science. These classifications were later adapted by figures such as Johann Frederick Blumenbach and George Cuvier, reinforcing racial hierarchies that persisted in biological and medical studies. In medical fields, racial taxonomies were incorporated into research and diagnosis, often leading to erroneous assumptions about genetic predispositions. Medical literature still reflects racial categories reminiscent of Linnaeus' classifications affecting patient diagnosis and treatment. Many diseases have been incorrectly attributed to race rather than to environmental, socioeconomic, or genetic factors. Although Linnaeus did not explicitly rank his human varieties, his system was later interpreted in hierarchical terms. The racial taxonomy was incorporated into 19th century scientific racism, which attempted to justify European superiority over other groups. George Cuvier, for example, built upon Linnaeus' work describing the so-called Caucasian race as superior in beauty and intelligence, whereas he likened Africans to primates. The idea that different races had inherent temperaments such as Europeans being governed by laws while Africans were governed by caprice became entrenched in Western thought and influenced colonial and racial policies. These ideas also played a role in eugenics movements which sought to control human reproduction based on perceived racial fitness. Linnaean racial taxonomies help solidify the concept of race as a biological reality rather than a social construct, a misconception that persists today. The U.S. Census, for example, historically classified individuals into racial groups similar to those originally outlined by Linnaeus, reinforcing racial divisions in society. The persistence of racial classification systems has led to institutionalized discrimination and structural racism. The widespread belief in racial determinism derived from flawed taxonomies continues to influence policies related to education, employment, health care, and criminal justice. The enduring impact of Linnaean racial taxonomies highlights the intersection between outdated scientific classifications and modern social structures. The history of Linnaeus' classification system of race underscores the dangers of conflating biology with sociocultural constructs. While contemporary genetics has dismantled the biological validity of race, the social consequences of Linnaeus' system remain deeply embedded in scientific, medical, and political institutions. Modern science has unequivocally demonstrated that race is a social construct without a basis in biology. Moving forward, adopting a more inclusive and scientifically valid framework will help dismantle the legacy of racial essentialism and promote a richer understanding of human diversity. By focusing on individual variation, cultural, context, and environmental influences, we may have a living experience where diversity is recognized, 
not as a hierarchy, but as a testament to the richness of human life.